Good afternoon, and welcome to AIADA's Auto Talk. I'm your host, Rachel Soleimani. Before we get started, a few quick reminders as always. Anyone who has registered for today's program will be receiving a copy by early next week. And if you have any questions, be sure to enter them into the Q&A bar at the lower right-hand side of your interface. Today, we welcome our good friends from CNA National, Amy Evans, Director of Product Development, and Kyle Smith, Product Manager. CNA National is our longest running AIADA affinity partnership. They've been with us since 1995, 28 years this year, and we're so glad to have them on today. Amy and Kyle, uh, I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you so much. We're very excited to be here today. So welcome everyone to our webinar. We're gonna be talking about tackling consumer concerns about EVs. We are very excited to have this opportunity. And so a big thank you to Rachel and Dan and everybody at AIADA for giving us this opportunity. So as Rachel mentioned, uh, today your presenters will be myself, Amy Evans, the Director of Product Development here at CNA National, and Kyle Smith, who is one of our fantastic product managers. So some of you on the call may be familiar with CNA National, but if you aren't, uh, we have been an industry leader in the F&I product space for over 40 years. Uh, we're very proud of our reputation as a company um, that pays claims that has great products. And we have a fantastic claims team that has over 200 ASC certified claims adjusters. And last year in 2022, we paid out nearly 300 million in claims. So just a quick background on us. And so why are we talking about EVs today? Well, we feel that we are bringing a new perspective to battery electric vehicles. Um, we're, and we also have the benefit of being brand agnostic. So we've done extensive research on battery electric vehicles, and that's given us um, what we feel is the expertise to be an industry leader in this space. And so we've covered EVs in our internal combustion engine, also known as ICE contract, since 2017. But our experience has led us to understand that EVs are very different, and we saw a need for a unique service contract. So in order to become experts on this new technology while we built out that contract, we partnered with manufacturers and we visited teardown centers. Uh, we spoke to um, dealers about their experiences with EVs. And while we were at the teardown centers in particular, we spoke to experts and we saw the components that make up almost every EV model on the road today. And we also um, conducted extensive research while we were there about how the vehicles are made, how they operate and how they differ from their gas counterparts. So uh, on May 1 of this year, we launched a new vehicle service contract that was built specifically for EVs where we were able to use all of that research that we've done. And while we were uh, doing this research, we pulled from our experience as a leader in the VSC space. And uh, we really feel like our experience of having that six years of experience with this contract that we had in place since 2017 has allowed us to create a really fantastic EV specific contract. And again, will help us be experts in this space. So this is an overview. This is our agenda for today. Um, in our research, we've learned that EV buyers are informed buyers. They come into the dealership with knowledge on the vehicles that they're interested in, and they're armed with questions to help address any concerns they have about purchasing an EV. So our agenda today is going to focus on developing that EV expertise to inform customers and providing them with the knowledge, resources, and peace of mind that they're seeking during this purchase experience. We're going to be discussing the ICE to EV transition, how and why to be an EV expert. We're going to talk a little bit about responsible battery practices that we feel should be shared with buyers. We're going to talk about how to help buyers overcome range anxiety concerns. And we'll also talk a little bit about some products that are beneficial beyond the service contract. And then last but not least, we're gonna be talking a little bit about what's next, what can be expected in this EV space over the next few years and next steps that people can take to ensure they're prepared for these new vehicles. And so with that, I'll hand it off to Kyle and he'll be uh, jumping into our first topic. Thanks Amy and thank you everybody for taking some time today to talk through EVs with us. So transitioning from a gasoline powered vehicle to an electric vehicle can be a tall order for consumers. In this first portion of our webinar, we'd like to talk through some of the resources available to help prospective buyers make the switch to electric. However, to kick things off, we want to spend some time talking about what types of vehicles we're focusing on today. You know, there are conventional gasoline-powered vehicles, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and all-electric vehicles. 
However, in our research, we found that hybrids and plug-in hybrids are closer aligned with ICE vehicles. We feel that hybrid vehicles take updated technology and slap it onto traditional ICE vehicles. We feel that battery electric vehicles are designed and built specifically to be just that, battery electric. And we felt our service contract should also be built from the ground up specifically for these vehicles. We felt so strongly about this, we actually offer two different service contracts, one that's specific for electric vehicles and another that is specific for ICE and hybrid models. We are actually only one of a handful of service providers that offer a vehicle service contract that is specific to battery electric vehicles. This includes some of the orig uh, original equipment manufacturers that offer extended coverages as well. Now, we say all of this to clarify that when we talk about EVs in this presentation today, we're talking specifically about battery electric vehicles. And so again, we want to talk through some of the transitional tools and resources that are available for buyers as they make the switch over to electric. To aid future buyers with charging, there are several electric vehicle manufacturers, such as Nissan, Hyundai, and Volkswagen, that actually offer incentives for free charging at public stations for a set duration of time. Most electric vehicle models also include built-in navigation tools to find the nearest charging stations and notify the driver of the duration of charge needed. We've also met with companies such as Recurrent and Altelium who have developed battery health applications that obtain data via either the OBD service, API integration, and driver-based data points regarding things like battery health, the range of the vehicle, temperature impacts, and more. This data is constantly evolving and improving and can be used on the dealer side to aid in appraising trades, the remarketing procedures, and buying and selling used EVs. Additionally, these types of companies offer tools and subscriptions that EV buyers can utilize to monitor things like ongoing battery health and their charging habits to prolong battery life and the range of the vehicle. These are all great resources dealers can utilize to ease consumer concerns when going through the purchase process. Now, we've talked about some of the tools and resources available to customers. However, we feel the most important tool for a dealer is having expertise on what makes these vehicles tick. And some of the items that we feel are necessary to become an expert are listed here. Now, we know this audience is probably already familiar with some of the topics we're going to address on this slide, but we feel understanding the difference between ICE and EVs is paramount in educating customers during their purchase, and it will arm dealers with the ability to answer and address consumer cons questions and concerns. You know, there are over 40 brand new components introduced in electric vehicles. And in recent conversations we had with fixed ops directors, we've learned that one of those brand new components, the charging port, is a common repair item with consumers struggling to line up the pins when they're charging the vehicle. Luckily, there are fewer moving parts in electric vehicles, which makes them less likely to break down. However, to become an expert, we also need to understand the concerns that consumers are having when making the jump to EVs. We have found that the top three concerns for customers are the initial cost of the vehicle, the higher MSRP for, for electric vehicle versus its ICE counterpart, some confusion around the propulsion batteries and whether or not there's a warranty or coverages on them when they break down. And then, of course, I think most of us are pretty familiar with the term range anxiety, whether or not the range on the vehicle is sufficient for daily use and where they can charge in the infrastructure today. And finally, we also feel it's important to bust some of the common myths and misconceptions in the marketplace today specifically surrounding things like charging limitations, warranty coverage for batteries, and maintenance requirements. Now, the transition from ICE to EV may be scary for some buyers. Dealers that exhibit a deep understanding of the new technology will have a leg up when showcasing an electric vehicle to a potential customer. Being able to explain which systems have been removed, like the fuel system, the exhaust system, the engine, and what the new components do will help put the buyer's mind at ease. For instance, the electric motor, power thermal management system, battery management system, they're all key components to the propulsion of the vehicle and the overall regulation of energy from the battery. These components will be important for both buyers and service drives to monitor to ensure optimal battery performance for years to come. There are also multiple parts of the electric vehicle that relate to charging beyond just the charging station and the charging adapters. There is the charging port where the charging cable plugs into the vehicle and delivers power to it, which is then received by the onboard charger and distributed through the vehicle by the high voltage power cables. But there are still a number of myths and misconceptions surrounding EVs that we need to address. 
A common myth today is that vehicles must be charged at their manufacturer's specific charging station. As many of you may be aware, Tesla has recently begun expanding their supercharger network to other EV models. In February of this year, select superchargers in the United States were actually opened up to different EV models. Later on in May, we saw an exclusive partnership between Ford and Tesla, gaining access to 12,000 Tesla superchargers for Ford customers. And just last week, we saw General Motors also obtain a partnership with Tesla for the same type of uh, access, therefore seeing, again, that expansive uh, accessibility of these chargers. Now, we can't bust myths on charging without also tackling myths on the battery. Now, since 2016, the United States government actually issued a federal mandate that requires all electric vehicle manufacturers to provide warranty coverage on the propulsion battery for a minimum of eight years and 100,000 miles. We're actually seeing some manufacturers and state governments provide extended coverage. In fact, beginning model year 2030, the state of California will extend their required warranty coverage to 10 years and 150,000 miles. We also see manufacturers like Kia and Hyundai that have already extended their coverage to 10 years and 100,000 miles, with Tesla also offering the eight-year coverage, but over 100,000 miles depending on the model the consumer purchases. Now, speaking of covering battery failure, battery failure is actually very rare. In fact, the first bullet on this slide is based on a study from InsideEVs.com, which reported that only one and a half out of every 100 EVs experience a or required a replacement of the battery. That second bullet point there also references the length of time and mileage that manufacturers expect propulsion batteries to last. That's t up to 20 years and 200,000 miles. There's a lot of concern today about propulsion batteries and whether or not they'll, they'll fail in the industry. And while it is expensive, around $25,000 to replace a uh, propulsion battery, it is also rare if the customer is properly maintaining their vehicle. Understanding these types of statistics and guiding customers with best battery practices will help put their minds at ease. Now, maintenance doesn't stop at just battery health. EVs do still require regular vehicle maintenance. In fact, service drives will still have opportunities to connect with EV buyers after the purchase is complete. Additionally, dealerships could offer things like battery health checks to help customers better understand how their driving and charging habits are impacting their vehicle. Now, we've talked a little bit about responsible battery practices, but we'd like to take a deeper dive into that concept now. Before we dive into how best to care for a propulsion battery, let's talk a little bit about the differences between battery degradation and battery failure. So battery degradation is the reduction of energy storage potential of a battery over time, kind of like the cell phone in your pocket. We've all experienced owning a cell phone and experienced lower battery life and more frequent charging events the longer we own it. Now this type of degradation results in a gradual decline of an EV's range. Most manufacturers will replace part or all of a propulsion battery in the event capacity degradation reaches 70% or less within the eight year, 100,000 mile coverage period. We feel a comprehensive service contract should offer the option for propulsion battery degradation that matches the manufacturer's definition. Now we wanna take a little dive into battery failure. So battery failure occurs when there's a malfunction, potentially damage or a manufacturer defect that exists within the battery. This can impact things like propulsion, loss of power, and reduce and restrict the ability to charge the vehicle. Similarly, if the battery is damaged due to road hazards, improper towing of the vehicle, improper storage, or other causes, you may be unable to drive the electric vehicle. And as previously mentioned, battery failure is rare in a well-maintained battery. Now, one of the things that CNA National provides to our agents and dealers that work with us is this battery degradation versus failure uh, resource tool. This is a great resource document for F&I managers to utilize with consumers when they're going through the underwriting process. This not only provides the definition of battery degradation and battery failure, but also provides some factors that contribute to poor battery health, therefore setting up the customer for success as they complete their purchase. Now, we've talked a lot about battery ownership best practices, and we want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into that now. Now, we recognize this audience is probably also already familiar with best practices for battery ownership, but we feel that these tips and tricks should be shared with consumers to optimize best habits for battery health. There are many ways to maintain battery health, and we suggest the following. 
One, consistently charging the EV to 100% or allowing it to deplete to 0% can create an additional strain on the battery. Parking in a shaded parking spot or in a garage will also help with vehicle longevity as and EV batteries need to stay cool. Consistently parking in direct sunlight could put unnecessary stress on the propulsion battery and the cooling mechanism. We also want to make sure we call out that consistently charging the vehicle in excessive temperatures can cause the battery to work harder to keep itself cool or warm while also accepting or and, excuse me, accepting and storing a charge. And as with all electric components, owners should avoid submerging the battery in liquid by avoiding things like off-roading, driving through large puddles, and of course, driving through flooded areas. We also recommend using fast chargers sparingly. While they are more convenient, they are also harder on their propulsion battery. EV owners should only use fast chargers when absolutely necessary and rely on lower level chargers for their day-to-day -day needs. And last but not least, dealers should ensure customers understand all of the built-in tools that are available to them. Many EV models offer maps with charging locations to help plan the next stop. This also allows your onboard computers to ensure the battery is at optimal temperature when it is charging. Some models also offer charging timers so you can plug your car in overnight and not have to worry about getting up when it reaches close to 100%. As well as helping customers own or understand the differences between the level of charges, like a level one charger, which plugs directly into the, to the wall, a level two charger, which has that 240 volt uh, charging port that gets you a little bit more charge. Then of course your level three charger, which is a full charging tower. That's your DC fast charger that we talked about using sparingly in the last slide. Now we can't talk about charging without also talking about how do we overcome range anxiety. In our research, what we found is that over, range anxiety is a top customer concern. Consumers have expressed concerns with the range of electric vehicles, the availability of charging stations within the infrastructure, and what options are available if the battery is depleted while on the road. Now, before we talk about the range of EVs today, we think it's important to look back at some of the earliest EV models that launched over a decade ago. The first, the Nissan LEAF, was in introduced in 2010 with a range of roughly 100 miles, whereas today's EVs have an average range of 300 miles. We have, a com we have come a long way since 2010. Now, the average customer drives less than 50 miles per day, which leaves plenty of surplus range in the average EV. Even the EVs of yesterday would accommodate that need. With ICE vehicles only having an average range of roughly 400 miles, current EVs are not very far behind. Also, with the introduction of long-range models and new innovations in battery technology, we will continue to see the average range of EVs grow. For example, there are models on the road today with ranges over 500 miles on a single charge. Now, a big question we have is, well, what happens if a customer runs out of charge while on the side of the road? To help ease customer concerns related to range anxiety, we feel that dealers should partner with a service contract provider that offers limp along coverage. Now, this coverage is a roadside benefit that provides a portable charge in the event a customer runs out of juice while on the road. CNA National thought it was crucial to provide limp along coverage in our service contract to provide dealers and consumers with peace of mind on the road. As with all new technology, portable charging networks are still being built out. So dealers should also ensure there is an alternative option in the event a customer is in an area without this limp along service. Our contract, for example, offers flatbed towing if a customer does not have limp along av available to them. Flatbed towing is critical for EVs to avoid damaging the propulsion battery that's housed underneath. And actually, in a review of 15 service providers, CNA National was only one of three that provide limp along coverage. And again, we can't talk about charging without also talking about the charging infrastructure. There are over 160,000 charging stations available in the United States as of quarter one, 2023 with nearly 50% of those having been introduced in 2022 alone. There are also projects in the works to add an additional half a million chargers by the end of the decade. Understanding where chargers are in your area will help you direct customers to the nearest location. Additionally, charging adapters have been introduced to the marketplace, which further expands the availability by allowing electric vehicle owners to charge their vehicles at any charging station, regardless of the charging port type in their vehicle. Now, propulsion batteries are constantly evolving, which will result in increased total range and improved charging speeds. In recent years, propulsion batteries in some models have actually shifted from 400-volt batteries 
to 800 volt batteries, which reduces the average charging speeds by nearly 50%. Now with that, I will kick back over to Amy so she can talk through how we can think beyond the service contract. Great, thanks Kyle. So as we mentioned previously, EV buyers are informed buyers, and they might come into the dealership with an idea of what they're looking for in a service contract. But we want to share a little bit about some products that we think EV, EV buyers may find benefit in. So EVs aren't just different under the hood. They, there's also been changes to keys, and some of these keys include apps, cards that you just keep in your wallet, and very advanced key fobs. Um, EVs also require different tires that ensure they can handle the added weight of that propulsion battery and also the extra torque that comes with these vehicles. EV tires also have to be a lot quieter to reduce that road noise that would otherwise have been covered under a traditional ICE engine. I think everyone on this call is probably familiar with the recent advancements in windshield technology. I'm sure everyone here has had some in their service drive, or maybe you have even had to have a personal windshield replaced, but it's a much more complex repair than it used to be. It is not a simple job. And so all of these items would benefit from production, or I'm sorry, prote protection, just like their ICE counterparts. So offering a full suite of products that can be applied to EVs will help the customer ensure they've got complete protection for their EV. Gap coverage is more important than ever in today's market, especially when you have a customer that's gonna be financing their EV purchase. So the reason why gap coverage is more important is that in general, EVs are more expensive than their ICE counterparts. The average EV comes in around $64,000, whereas the average internal combustion engine vehicle comes in around $48,000. Additionally, today's higher interest rates will lead to a slower reduction in the principal balance thus leading to a higher gap at time of loss. This gap could also be exacerbated by the faster depreciation that's experienced by EVs. We found that on average, EVs depreciate around 28% faster in the first three years of ownership. Additionally, due to the high cost of propulsion batteries and other EV technology, EV repairs can be up to 53% higher than their ICE counterparts when it comes to physical damage to the vehicle. And so this could potentially lead to a higher total loss in EVs. So all of these things lead to being a greater need for gap coverage on these financed electric vehicles. And explaining these risks, risks to the customer can help them understand the benefit of purchasing that gap contract and also showcase the unique EV knowledge that dealers have. So let's dive into what's next. What can we expect in the near future for EVs? And then also what can be done to help prepare for making sure you're ready for these models. So we recognize there's a lot of data on this graphic, but the takeaway here is that over the next four years, we expect to see over 100 EV models hit the marketplace. This data was pulled in Q4 of last year, and we're already seeing additional models added to this list. So this graphic highlights the importance of ensuring dealers and their industry partners are prepared for the expanding EV market share including understanding the differences of these vehicles and being prepared with a complete product portfolio. As we mentioned at the top of the presentation, you know, we believe knowledge is power and we wanted to share that knowledge with all of you. And so we've gained extensive EV knowledge through our creation of our EV service contract. And we share that with our partners through webinars and, newly and our newly released web-based self-guided EV training. This training includes helpful knowledge checks and a certification exam for participants to prove their EV knowledge at the end of the, of the modules. We also encourage salespeople and F&I professionals to experience an EV to help guide buyers through their experience. So take an EV for a test drive, go get it charged at a public charger, charge it at home, utilize those built-in tools that Kyle mentioned to be sure that you really understand how they work and you can help put that buyer's mind at ease. And then last but not least, our country's charging infrastructure is constantly changing, as Kyle talked about on that slide with the map on it. And we need to understand the charging landscape in our local areas to be able to provide guidance to customers on when and where they can utilize those public chargers and how they might be able to balance some of the concerns around how long it takes to charge their EV versus maybe somewhere where they're going to be spending some time anyway, like the grocery store or a restaurant. So in summary, We've talked about the ICE to EV transition. We talked about how and why to develop EV expertise. We also shared a little bit about responsible battery practices, including the differences between degradation and failure and the do's and don'ts of battery maintenance. 
We talked about how to overcome that range anxiety concerns that customers might have and about how their daily driving habits compare to the total range available in that EV and maybe some roadside benefits that could be offered. We also talked about what's beyond the service contract that could have a complete portfolio to offer those customers to protect their new purchase. And then lastly, we talked about next steps and the importance of partnering with the right people and making sure we all have a solid understanding of this new technology. At the bottom of the screen, we have a QR code. The QR code will take you to our electric vehicle service contract landing page. On that landing page, you'll find more information about our EV journey, our new service contract, and a fantastic product video that provides more detail. And it really dives into like, what are the differences between ICE and EV? It's got a really good visual included. So please uh, feel free to visit there, learn a little bit more, and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. And with that, we'd like to open it up to the group. Amy and Kyle, we had a question come in that I will read to you. For a dealer with reinsurance positions on their vehicle service contract business, what advice would you offer as it pertains to electric vehicles? It's a great question. Um, we've had a lot of discussion with our agents and our dealers pertaining to this point. And ultimately, it is going to come down to the, app, the risk appetite of that dealer. And in our team, we've got a fantastic reinsurance team here. We can help um, really dive into how that would work. And with our service contract in particular, we do offer several different levels of coverage. So maybe if a dealer isn't comfortable reinsuring an electric vehicle, or I'm sorry, a propulsion battery on the electric vehicle, we do have coverage options that don't include that propulsion battery. So it can be customized a little bit to meet those needs. Thank you for that. And then one more. Does your service contract cover battery failure? So as we discussed um, earlier in the presentation, there is a difference between battery failure and battery degradation. In our research, we found that battery failure is, as we mentioned, very rare, but it's also often going to be caused by like a manufacturer defect, um, possibly misuse or abuse of the vehicle, um, and maybe even some damage to the battery if they hit a road hazard or something. Uh, and so we feel that battery degradation should be covered, but not battery failure. So yes, in our contract, we do cover battery degradation. It's a natural occurrence. It's expected with these propulsion batteries. So we define degradation the same way as the OEM. So depending on the make of the vehicle depends on where that degradation um, threshold is going to be, but it is covered on our richest level of coverage. Well, Amy and Kyle, thanks so much for joining us today. What a great and informative presentation, and we're, we're just really lucky to have you on. So thank you again. Thank you so much for having us. Of course. Everyone on the line, you will be receiving a copy of this webinar by early next week. This was our last webinar until September 7th when we come back and kick off our fall series with, Charlie, with Cox's Charlie Chesbro and his real-time market update. For more information about AIADA, visit AIADA.org. Thanks for tuning in and have a great summer, everyone.